Hey there. Good morning. Hello. Uh, yesterday, we uh, took some time and talked about the story of the prodigal son and the story of the loving father. And uh, man, today, I just want to go back there again because, uh, man, I just had a random, not random at all, but it felt maybe random conversation with a friend yesterday about the prodigal son. And um, in the prayer at the end of the conversation, the Lord illuminated some things because his word is alive and uh, I just haven't been able to shake it. So I am really, really excited to share with you this super familiar story and something that I never ever noticed before. So you'll notice the, uh, the verses that are highlighted at the beginning of this post um, from Luke chapter 15. And uh, the lead into what I want to talk about here today is Luke 21. The son who came to his senses said, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy of being called your son. That son had such a healthy, honest, real perspective of what a screw up he was, of how wrong he was, but also a healthy, real perspective of his father and of what he had turned his back on. And a lot of times it's not until we turn our back on things where we have a come to our senses moment where we go, oh my goodness, I had it so good. But then we have to be willing to swallow our pride to get back to that which we didn't even realize how good it was originally. But anyway, that's not even what I want to get to. So verse 22 says this. It says, but his father said to the servants, quick, get the finest robe in the house, put, a, put it on him, get a ring for his finger, sandals for his feet, kill the calf we've been fattening. We got to celebrate for the son of mine was dead and now is returned to life. He was lost, but now he's found. Catch these words. It says, so the party began. What I want to talk to you about today is partying with your dad. So the prodigal son or the loving father gave his snot-nosed, arrogant, I want what I got coming to me son everything he wanted in his inheritance. And then the son partied. You better believe he partied. He partied to the end of he had no limit to his resources until they ran out, but he went and he lived large. And of course, got to the end of it and came to his senses. But here's what I never saw before. When he came home, he came home wanting just to be a servant. His dad wasn't willing to allow him to be a servant. His dad called him son and immediately gave him the ring, gave him the robe, gave him all of the stuff to not just tell him his son, but to give him the physical things that he would be able to show everybody, not even show everybody, because it's not like he's going, hey, look, I'm in the sun. He still had his head down. But everybody knew, including the older brother, that that youngest son was dad's son. Dad celebrated him. When's the last time you realize that your heavenly father celebrates you? Celebrates you at your least worthy of being celebrated moment. Wow! This father celebrated his boy, embraced his boy, identified with his boy, gave him the ring to say, that's my boy, but we're not done yet. Then he says, get the fatted calf, all of that. Dad was able to throw a party in a way that no worldly person ever could. The heavenly father throws a party, satisfies our needs, our desires, our appetites, our wants in a way that the world never could even touch. Now the Bible's straight with us. It says sin is fun for a season and that's one of the worst things about sin is it is fun. It does feel good, yada, yada, yada. But the reality is can't nobody party like our Heavenly Father can party. And there's no party like our Heavenly Father, not because he's richer or better. No, here's the nugget, here's the nugget. The, our Heavenly Father parties better than anybody else because he's there. The presence of our Heavenly Father, of us being willing to recognize our lack, recognize our sin, recognize our need for the Father, and recognize that his resources, his blessings, his ability to party, if I could use that metaphor, is unlike anything we could ever do or bring. So I want to invite you today to know who you are. Your value to your father is based upon who you are, not on what you've done. This son was adored, identified with, embraced, and celebrated long before he could memorize a scripture, do a devotion, do a little sermon on Facebook. The son was valued because he was his dad's. You are worthy of being celebrated today because you're God's. You're his son. 
you're his daughter, and anything that we can find hope, satisfaction, or value in is worthless, or I should say short-lived, if we're not doing it together with the Father. Man, live today together with the Father. Invite him into your reality. Invite him into your struggle. Invite him into your failures. Invite him into your losses. Invite him into your pain. Invite him into your fear. Invite the Father in. I'm not saying everything will get right right away. I'm just saying if we don't invite the Father in and realize who we are in him, it's going to be tough sledding. Man. The Father, it says, so the party began. And I pray in all of our lives that when we allow ourselves to be with the Father, obeying the Father, recognizing our sonship, our daughtership, is that a word? <laughs> Man, that's where the party begins. Heavenly Father, I pray the party would begin for some people today as we recognize whose we are. Lord, I'm your son. We're your sons. We're your daughters. We're your kids. And Lord God, we know how much we don't deserve it, just like the prodigal son knew that. But Lord God, I pray that today we would party with you. Lord, I pray our focus would not be on the fatted calf or on our worthiness or any of those things, because Lord, we can be in the middle of the truth of your love for us and be so focused on our unworthiness. Lord, I pray that we would focus on your love for us. I pray we'd focus on your embrace of us, which has nothing to do with our performance and everything to do with your love for us. Lord, I struggle to accept your love, and I know I'm not alone. Lord, there's times that you've tried to embrace me and I've just stiffened up. Lord, I pray that today we would accept your embrace and accept your party, especially in the middle of a crazy, crazy culture and world. Lord, I pray for peace. I pray for embrace. I pray for sonship and daughtership to be very real today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's party.